Welcome to Opinion Nation. I'm Sean Cole, and on today's show, we have Tony Gardner, the president of iRacing on the show. Hello, Tony. How you doing today? Hey, Sean. How you doing? Great to be on my, my first Skype interview ever, and I know Darren's back there somewhere helping out with the, with the technical stuff, so hi to Darren as well. Thank you, and, and thanks for being on the show today. It's been a long time since we've had you on the show, and I mean, iRacing has gone through tremendous amount of changes since then, so I thought now is a great time to talk to you and kind of catch up on iRacing, both uh, what everybody knows about it and maybe some of the behind the scenes stuff as well. Yeah, sure, it sounds great. It's uh, gonna be fun to uh, get together and chat a little bit. Um, now, before we get into sim racing, I do wanna just talk to you about life a little bit. I mean, first off, I mean, how'd you become president of iRacing? I mean, did you have sim racing background? No, not really. It's actually quite a long, boring story. So, uh, but uh, basically, they had a they had a, a job opening um, for a chief financial officer, um, and uh, that that's sort of my background, chief operating officer, and uh, from both small and big companies. So, uh, um, I, I, a recruiter called me, and uh, I came in for interview interview and got the job, and I had no sim background experience at all. In fact, they were probably looking for somebody without that because everyone else here did. But I, I do have a. I do have a, my whole background is basically in software. Um, before iRacing, I did a, an internet startup, um, online startup, but it was educational software. So I have a lot of consumer software and educational software background, gaming software, as a matter of fact, just not sim racing. Now, what about regular racing? I mean, are you an automotive racing fan at all? Uh, I, I, I love all sports and, uh, and I love racing as well. So I'll, I'll sit down and watch anything. And, uh, um, and I've grown to, uh, and I used to watch racing before I racing um, and go to an occasional race, but uh, definitely a, I've learned so much more about racing since I've been here and living and breathing this stuff 24 seven for the last six years. So, um, but I'm still learning. Um, I watch a lot of NASCAR and IndyCar racing because that's, what, that's what's on TV here in the US uh, during prime time. So, uh, but I try to, you know, I'll get up on a Sunday morning and try to catch a little bit of an F1 race, but but uh, honestly, I, I know I'm going to be watching football later in the afternoon, so I don't want to be watching TV for 10 hours a day. So, so I don't catch as much F1 racing, and uh, I watch some Grand Am racing and things like that. But I probably watch NASCAR the most, probably appreciate the most because I know the most about it because it's, it's what's on TV over here for the most part in, in the U.S. Sure. So, so least, with your you know, being a big fan of sports and now that you are involved, how much sim racing? I mean, are you a sim racer now? Do you consider yourself a sim racer? Yeah, like I was just telling somebody, I think if I ever uh, left iRacing for one reason or another, you know, what, whatever happened to kick me out of here, I, I think I would still keep sim racing. I've grown to, uh, I've grown to really appreciate it and like it. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's cool, you know, you, you start and you kind of get sweaty and nervous when you're about to start a race. But I do a lot of testing and I have fun with that. But uh, I think I have over 100 career races and not one win. So um, you, can tell I get, you can tell I get a late start on it. Um, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get better. How about your kids? Are you turning them into sim racers? Yeah, they're just getting into it. Um, my son's off to college, and uh, he played all the regular normal sports and was a real busy kid. But uh, I think, you know, he's, now that he's in college, I think he has more free time and not playing high school sports. So uh, actually, he did. Uh, he came into the office and this summer got kind of a little bit hooked, and now we've been ra he's been racing. I hate to say it. This is illegal. He's been racing under my account. <laughs> my account. And so don't... Uh, I gotta watch out. Nim Cross isn't watching this. He might suspend me. But uh, or anyway, you, he's been racing. Or you'd think the president would have enough pull to get him an account. Yeah, you'd think I should get him a VIP account. I never thought of that. I just, I just go home and, you know, open it up for him, and <laughs> let him run. All right, we won't tell anybody. Keep All it right. between us. Now we are talking racing, so let's move on to iRacing racing a little bit. And something I've been wanting to ask you about for a long time, but Long Beach, one of your most recent uh, tracks. Um, you guys called it a tech track, so let's start there. Why do you consider it a tech track? What, it, what determines a tech track? It, it's a track that, it, it was before I, you know, I started in iRacing in 2007, and I think they scanned it, you know, when the company first opened in whatever, 2006 or something. And it, it, it was a track that we got. We put a lot of money into the scan and everything else. But um, it was just such a massive project at the time that we needed to get tracks out so we could test them and things like that. And it literally was, you know, four to five to six times the work as a normal, even an F1 track. So we put it on hold at that time, and um, we never we never got back to it because because of that very fact that it, it's just there's so many trackside objects to do 
hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, but we still, you know, we have a plan to start it next year. Um, but I'm not promising, but to get back to it. But at the same time, it was every, it was complete except for the artwork for the most part. And we had pro drivers and members saying, can I drive it, can I drive it? And people were flying in from around the country just to race on Long Beach, which I guess should tell us something, including pro drivers. So we said, this is silly. Why don't we at least let them get that out on the sim and let people drive on it if they want. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't finished. So we, had, we wanted to brand it differently so people would know, and we sold it for one-third the normal price. So, um, so we wanted people to know that it wasn't a finished track, so we came up with a new brand called a Tech Track. Um, but we hope to get back to it someday. And we have like seven or eight other tracks that are scanned and in that state. And we said, well, maybe we'll get these tracks out as well because other things keep taking priority over some of these tracks that we scanned years ago. Um, so we said, why don't we make a few, you know, as, as we take, it might take us three, two, three, four years to finish some of these. So why don't we at, le at least let people drive them if they want. If they don't want to drive them, they don't have to. So that was, it was as simple as that. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but. No, it makes total that's, sense. But that's just, what we did. just to be clear, it sounds like it was basically the, the complexity of the track side objects that were making it a difficult track to complete. Is that? Yeah, for every, every, every one of these tech tracks has a different story, but for Long Beach, we would definitely love to have that track in the sim right now, but it was ju it's just such a massive project um, that you know, we, we, it, it kept getting pushed aside because if we did that track, we might not do much else that year. And um, as we were trying to get all the NASCAR tracks finished, trying to get some um, global tracks done, Europe, uh, European tracks and Asian tracks and F1 tracks and tracks around the world, we, we bumped the priority up to try to do some of that, tracks in Australia and stuff, um, versus just focusing on one uh, track here in the U.S. So we'll get to it. Now that we have 70 tracks in the service, you know, I think a little bit of the pressure's off. And we can circle back and do that track it's at some point soon, hopefully. Absolutely. When you guys released it as a tech track, were you guys nervous? Did you feel like there'd be any kind of backlash with it? Um, a little bit. That's probably why we didn't do it before. We, we, were, we were worried that, you know, Oh, look at iRacing is putting out these half-finished tracks. You know, um, I, I guess that was the concern. But you know, uh, you know, you know, we're not making you know we're not making money on that track per se. So it, it's just it's just to make the if it's there if people want it. You know, basically due to demand. It's due to demand. You know, it just makes your overall service. And I know for a fact that a lot of pro drivers you know called us and wanted to. Uh, we had pro drivers flying here from California, um, and in England, frankly, just to drive on that track to get ready for a race. And it was like, this is silly. Why don't we just put it out there so they can just download it in two seconds? I, I gotta tell you, we love that track. And, and it's actually kind of interesting driving it in the form it's in. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a different look. Uh, what has the opinion or response been to it so far? I mean, widespread. I think very positive. I think people uh, love the idea of it and love to be able to get on it. I know some leagues are even racing on it. Um, we're not going to put it in our official racing because um, it's not finished, but we'll get to it someday. And um, our people want more tech tracks, so uh, you know that that tells us something that they they want they want us to do more of these as we, you know, sort of a stopgap as we, you know, New Jersey Motorsports Park we're going to put out in this next build, you know. And it, you know, to be honest, it might take us another couple three years to get to that track because there's so many things above it. I hate to say that, but. Um, but we'll get to it. Uh, we know some people want it, so uh, they're all great tracks. We just can't do everything, you know. It's hard to decide what to do next. Uh, so I'm sure Willows next on the list, right? We'll we'll probably do Willows. That that's a, we could. Uh, we'll probably do Willows after New Jersey, I would guess. I'd like to get Willows done. Uh, I know it's a, a fun little track, but uh, we always we always kind of joke around about getting that one done. But uh, we'll um, we'll probably do we'll do that one probably next, if unless we decide to do it as a full track, but. My guess is it will start as a tech track. So right now, are you guys currently scanning any tracks? Um, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of info. Uh, uh, we, uh, we did sign Coda, you know, um, so, uh, you know, the, the, tech, uh, the, the track in Texas, the F1 track in Texas. So uh, we're going to scan that September 29th. Really? Yeah, so uh, that, that is the next one that we're going to be scanning. Um, right now, we're working on Bathurst. Um, on the roadside, that is a massive track too. Talk about Long Beach. So that was probably the most work we've ever put into a track was Bathurst, and the, the next 
oval track. It'll be our last Sprint Cup track. Um, it should roll out um, this year is California, you know, Fontana. So that'll wrap up. We'll have every Sprint Cup track once we roll that out. So um, just jumping around here. Uh, but that's the next one we're scanning is, uh, is Coda, September 29th. So if uh, anybody's around there, bring, um, bring the salt. We like the Salt Lake Barbecue. Come visit us. <laughs> I guess there's a place down there. It's Steve Meyer's favorite barbecue in the world, Salt Lake Barbecue. Come visit us with the barbecue September 29th. I tell you what, why don't you bring us there and we'll bring you the barbecue. Yeah, we should talk about that offline. I, I, I'd like to do that. That'd be a lot of fun. fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it, I'm 99% sure it's September 29th. Okay, that is awesome. I think that's great news for everybody. I mean, I think that track has a, a huge following already and... and a, it would be a big addition to the sim, especially the F1 side. Yeah, we try to get all the, I mean, just so everyone knows, I mean, we're, you know, I think we, I don't know what we have, um, five or six current F1 tracks, but, uh, you know, we're trying to get them all. I mean, but, uh, you know, F1 tracks are, you know, they're, they're not, um, they're not easy to get and it take a long time to, um, to work that out. So, you know, hopefully someday we'll, uh, we'll get most of them, but, uh, it's, uh, it, the licensing is a little more tricky on those tracks. I can imagine. Well, I can keep you talking on tracks all day, but I do have a lot I want to talk to you about. So, okay. something in your last release that was a big deal, which was support for the Mac operating system. Um, why did you guys go that direction? I mean, I don't think anyone even saw that coming. You know, it's just sort of common sense. Grow sim racing, grow iRacing. You know, I think, um, you know, the stats I read, that you know, about 50%, 15% of the world is now on Mac or Linux. And, um, so it just broadens our base um, of potential customers. You know, we obviously get inquiries all the time um, that people love our Mac users and they want to be able to sim race. And it, you know, it's a barrier to entry. So you know, it's just trying to take away those barrier entries to get more people to sim race. Uh, we just released the Linux this week too. So we're, we're, on, the, we're on the Linux and Mac uh, as of today. Um, you know, I know in some, some, some communities love games on Linux. Uh, Germany, for example, I know is a, is a bigger Linux country than most. And uh, so it just opens up more opportunities for people to try sim racing. Um, so anyway, that's, that, cool. that's why we did it. Any idea how many people or, I mean, have you seen a nice influx of people on those systems? We kind of rolled it out a month ago, but it, we didn't really tell anybody about our membership. So we haven't really marketed to the outside world. So we're just starting to do that. But um, we have seen some influx for sure. Um, but I, I was just asked, in fact, before I came into this meeting to see if we could run the numbers, how many people are now on Mac and Linux and stuff like that. So uh, we'll, we'll, I don't have the answer for you today, but um, I think it's going to take time. We're going to start, you know, running, honestly running some ads and things like that on some Mac sites and see if we can get people the word out that we, you know, there is a good racing game out there that runs on Mac and Linux and get the word out. So uh, hopefully um, people will, uh, will try it. Yeah, a little too soon to tell maybe. Now, too I have soon to, to tell. I, I'm totally naive on this, but when it comes to running on, on Mac or Linux, what kind of drivers, what kind of support for wheels are there? Do you know? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, that, that's Linux, um, Linux, there is no problem with drivers because that community kind of develops their own. So all the force feedback wheels work. I say all, but um, I'm not sure about everyone in the world, but every, everyone that I know of works. Um, and they all work on Mac too. The only difference on Mac is some of you know some wheels you you lose some degrees of uh, some range uh, because they don't have the right drivers. So it has nothing to do with iRacing. racing. It has nothing. To, it's just that the drivers don't exist. So there's um, all the wheels work. You can race with them, but some of them you lose degrees of uh, degrees of uh, motion, and some you might even lose um, force feedback. Um, so hopefully uh, we we've emailed all the wheel companies and said, hey, we're you know you know. Get some, get some drivers going um, if they're missing them. Some of them have good drivers and some don't. So um, they all work, um, just not as well as on a PC, um, to be honest. So that's, that's kind of where that stands. So hopefully over time, um, the drivers will get developed and the force feedback and the range of motion will work for, for degrees of motion will work for all the, all the wheels. Sure, and just, just like PC was years ago. I mean, it just takes, the more people doing it, the faster it'll accelerate right. that coming available. Yeah, and like the Logitech wheels work fine, and you know the, the you know on the Mac and things like that. So, um, if you go to our website, if you are a Mac user, and you click under hardware, um, there's a little link there, and we talk about we talk a little bit about it. If you're curious about your wheel, so if you're looking for more information, we have an FAQ for that. So.
Excellent. Awesome. But worst case scenario, it does work. It's 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 it just might not work as well as on on the PC. Sure. And in time, it might improve. So I mean, that's exactly good. exactly. Okay. Um, let's talk about driver swaps. Any idea when we're going to see it? And any more importantly, I guess since it's coming, any idea how it's going to work? I mean. I knew you were going to ask that because it's Darren's favorite subject. Every yeah. time I talk to him, that's, that's the first thing out of his mouth. Um, yeah, it, we're, st we're still going hard and heavy on it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bigger project than we thought, to be, to be honest. But uh, the guts of it are done. Uh, we're in our final stages of it. Um, and I, I, I'm getting away from giving time on it, but, you know, we're getting close. It will not be in this build. I will say that, this coming build in uh, – uh, in October, but we're getting close. Um, it it, it uh, it's just it's it's a big project. Um, every single area of code in our sim, you know, in some cases twenty years of code had to be touched. Right. Um, it it we ended up doing a lot more than with it than we thought we were going to do. We were just going to do driver swaps, but it ended up being a lot more than that. It's going to work on hosted. It's going to work in official. Um, you're going to be able to create teams. Um, six people will be able to join the race. I think I think you have something like 60 people on the team, um, and then six. I think it's six people can join the race together. Um, so uh, you can have a spotter, you know, a crew chief, and then four drivers. You'll be able to do 20, literally race uh, race for 24 hours. So um, you know, us Sean Siff's here with me too over here. Um, you know, the four of us could be on a team. You could be taking a nap. Darren could be going out to lunch. Um, we could have somebody in Germany on our team. And you can join, you know, race for an hour, go take a nap, come back, join right back in the same session. So there's just so much engineering involved in that to make sure your setup stayed the same, your paint stayed the same, all the data, all the I rating, all the safety rating, how that all worked. Um, I, I won't do it even justice discussing but all the things that had to be touched. But, it, but it, it, it was a massive, massive project. But it sounds like driver swaps in a capacity that has never even been close to done. And then, and, and, I mean, really, it sounds like you're duplicating the real-life environment of driver swaps and endurance racing. Yeah, you'll be able to do, um, I think right now, we'll be able to do a tw literally a 24-hour race. Um, um, I don't know if we're going to do that, but we, we could. We will. We will. That's why Darren keeps asking every time you talk to him is because the first thing we're going to do when it's available is have a 24-hour race. Right. And, and we'll be doing that. That will be our – that is our favorite form of racing, I think. Right. And you should be – you know, you, you'll be able to join, like, more organized, like, join as a team so the team gets together and joins the server together. Or you'll be able to do it on the fly um, sort of as a team. Um, so, you know, it's – it's touching every one of our database tables. It's touching every piece of our code. Um, I don't, yeah, there'll definitely be nothing out there like it and probably never will be. If we could add, do it all over again, we probably wouldn't have done it, <laughs> to be <laughs> well, honest. I, I'm very glad you are. So, that, so uh, we're, we're getting close. The guts of it are done. And so is now, Darren. And, and anyway. I, I know a few thousand other people that'll be pretty excited about well, it, I hope too. so. I hope so. So, all right. Uh, something else, the rough Porsche. How's that coming along? Uh, that's coming along good. It's in it's in alpha. It's in testing. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be in the build because we're, we're doing a two wheel drive version, a four wheel drive version, and sort of an aspirated carburetor um, cup version. When you buy that car, you get three different cars, and we still have a little bit of engineering work to do on the four wheel drive version. And I, I don't, I it's not done, so I hate to say it's going to be in the build because um, that four wheel drive version is not done. Um, and we kind of want to release them all together, but maybe we won't. Um, um, I don't know if it's going to be in the bill, but it's close. The, the artwork's all done. It's in testing. Um, it's a super fun car to drive. Um, I, like the, I like the lower horsepower sort of version, the cup version we're calling it for now. It's a, I don't know what we're really going to call it. But, um, but anyway, it's, it's going to be a blast. It's a fast, fast car. Yeah, no doubt. So the, the all-wheel drive, I mean, that sort of opens things up to a whole new variety of cars, really. Yeah, that's why, the, 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 you know, it's not like, oh, it's, you know, it's pushing a button. So we, we have to do some, uh, some physics and some engineering work to, to make that happen. So that's not complete yet. It's not a, where we're at, it's not a big deal to finish it. I just don't, I think we'll run out, I think we're going to run out of time for that, for the four-wheel drive version for the build. And, you know, four-wheel drive, that always leads to the concept of rally cars or dirt or something else. I never know. I mean, we yeah. we always ask you questions in any direction. So any any direction in that 
for dirt? Um, probably rallies closer than dirt, but uh, you never know. I mean, we we have we just hired two more engineers, and you never know what uh, you know. The more capacity to have, the more we can do. So uh, I wouldn't expect dirt anytime soon. We we all would love to do dirt. Um, we talk about rally a lot. Um, you know, dirt can be a part of rally or not, a big part of rally or not. So uh, you know, rally would be. I think that's probably what holds us back a little bit to do rally racing is the fact that they're, you know, it's probably more fun with dirt or some dirt, some dirt parts of the track. So, uh, but um, rally racing for us, a big piece of it is, is the, just doing the race control um, because, you know, other than, other, you know, it wouldn't be that big of a deal other than that. So we'll get, we'll get to that someday, I hope. We're not working on it now, but I hope, hopefully we will. Let's talk about a completely different concept, open source, or the concept of modding. Any future plans in any capacity for anything like that? Yeah, we talk about it a lot. I mean, iRacing was really, uh, you know, when we started iRacing, one of the things we tried to do is say, geez, what, what, what do sim racers find frustrating? Um, what do we find frustrating as sim racers? I, you know, everyone here has been a, a lifelong sim racer. Um, and. It, it was one of the things that was kind of like top on the list was version control and and somebody really organizing the racing and somebody not having to worry do I have the right car do I have the right track do I have to sort of be a, a computer nut worrying about all these files scattered all over the place and so a big thing always with i racing is to make it super simple um, organized and centralized so you know that the car you have is the guy the guy out there with you has the exact same car the exact same track and it was a click of a button to download them and we always, and the other thing we tried to do was to have these official centralized big races. So it was sort of the opposite of, of modding, um, but we definitely get the attraction of modding. So we have talked a lot about, you know, the way we've talked about it maybe doing someday is maybe is to create engineering tools, our own engineering tools. And because a lot of teams ask us for that too, um, you know, real life teams, and to give them basically access. A simple use drop down access to the way we build cars and so people could build their own cars and so we've talked about building engineering tools and then maybe to take the next step further is maybe if um, there was starting to be high really high quality modders using our tools they could actually submit their cars and we could look at them and if we had a license for them because we officially license everything maybe we could say well we'll we'll um, we'll consider that to be one of our cars um, but if people just wanted to build their own cars for testing and offline um, you know, that's how we kind of look at modding right now if we, if we did it and then maybe taking the next step to, but I don't think we'd, you know, there are other products out there that do full scale modding and do it, do it the kind of traditional way. I don't know if we'd ever go there, but maybe a half step to it, um, is kind of the way we look at it. Um, anyway, I, it, it, it's, it's another niche. I mean, there's so many different niches out there and you can't be everything to everybody. Um, otherwise you'll never get anything done. I understand that. Um, all right, let's switch to the racing side of things a little bit and talk about the DWC. How do you think things have gone this year? Great. I mean, it, you know, I think every season gets better and better. You know, you, you know, you get the same guys. It seems like, well, I shouldn't say the same guys. You see the same guys at the top in first place, but the guys under them are kind of uh, mixing. But, uh, you know, we're going to continue to tweak it. I, I think it was a good year. Um, I think the racing is better than ever to watch. I think the broadcasts are better than ever. Um, the quality keeps improving. Um, I think the races get um, better. There's less cautions and things like that. You know, Gregor Hutu won the roadside again. Uh, is that three and three? Three out three, of four. Three out of four. It's hard to keep track. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ray Alfalo again is in uh, is in first place again. Uh, that's not over yet. Uh -huh. Tyler Hudson just won his first race, um, but uh, this week and. Uh, you know he's but he was in first for most of the year so and Ray started off with a couple of uh, bad races so I, I thought I thought he was gonna get knocked out but uh, right now it looks like Ray's gonna win another one too so uh, we, we, we uh, we've already announced some changes to it um, and we have some other tweaks t to do but you know it is what it is those guys are really good I mean what do you I mean what are you gonna do handicap them so yeah. I don't know maybe maybe you have some ideas so send them to me if you do but uh, uh, I mean those those guys are great so they're just great sim racers so what kind of changes do you know of for next season? Well, just, you know, we, uh, we, we had it where, you know, 25 were guaranteed a spot back. Uh, next year it's only 20 are guaranteed a spot back. 
Um, we reduced the number of people that qualified in the pro, you know, the pro series. For people that don't know, there's a pro series, which is a FIDA series, to so this world championship series that you win the big prize money. Um, we reduced the number of drivers in the pro series. Um, I think we're going to, right now we have, um, so we, th there's that change, some other smaller things like that, how you qualify, how you get in, how you stay in. Um, and so uh, w we're changing the way we're doing qualifying next year where um, the 20 guys that are in are in no, ma are, are, are in no matter what. Um, so right now, you know, the 50 people qualifying for 43 spots next year, the, no matter what, the, the 20 guys are in the race. Because um, we didn't want somebody to lose a championship over, you know, they, they had one bad lap in qualifying or something like that and didn't get in a race. Um, so a bunch of little things like that um, off the top of my head. I got I got to go back and study the study what we did, but uh, uh, those are a couple couple small examples. Nothing that's going to make it harder for them to repeat again, though, huh? I guess that wouldn't be very fair, though. <laughs> no, we're not. It's it's still not open where you know where they have to qualify from scratch. So um, you know because I, I mean, one of the things we're trying to do is is honestly create some continuity in this too. It's like people. You know, there's plenty of room for new people to come in, but you also want to have, well, how, how would those guys do against Gregor Hutu? You know, if Greg, if, if Greg, if we made it so hard that Gregor Hutu couldn't get back in, you would always wonder, or Tyler Hutz, or, or, you know, Ray Alfala, um, how would they do against those guys? So you don't want to, you know, to me, you want some continuity. You want to, you want, it's good to know who these people are. You can follow them. Just like the real world, you, if you're a Dale Jr. fan, you can follow him. I, I think you know these guys are starting to create some fans in the in the sim racing community, and they want to watch them. Absolutely, and they're undeniably the best at this moment in time. All right, um, let's talk about the F1 car a little bit. It's, I mean, one of my favorite cars in the service, but some would say it's kind of dated to F1. Any plans for an update to that car or a new car with DRS and Kurs or anything like that? Um. Well, are pl I mean, there's plans to update at some point, but um, you know, the F1 the F1 cars are tricky um, to get. Um, th there's a lot of licensing issues with those cars. Um, you know, we, we had a license for a number of years, and you know, it's winding down. And we'll, we'll probably update that car at some point, and you know, hopefully look into putting those new systems. You know, look into obviously putting in those new systems at the same time. I don't know how tricky those are. Um, so that's just me off the top of my head. Nice to have the the curse system and whatnot, but uh, um, I don't know how tricky that is from a to try to simulate that. Um, with the IndyCar back in the day, we we had you know tried to look into that. They had a, a system like that, and we we had kind of gone down that path. So I think we can do it, but it, it'll probably be a little while before we update the F1 car. Like throw away the old car and start with the new F1 car is what I'm saying. Right. We just did a lot of work to our current F1 car, but. Um, be a while before we just completely ditch it and probably roll out a new one right well I, okay so i mean totally off the wall question here but i mean licensing for the f1 car becomes an issue what about the idea of iRacing creating its own formula one car that didn't necessarily need licensing i mean is that something you think people would like is that something you guys have ever considered yeah we, we talk about that a lot we we, we um uh, you know we could we could do that it's always i i think you know, a lot of you know, you can, a lot of people people like to drive what they see on TV for sure. Um, but yeah, that's that's something we could do. Um, you know, our, our whole thing is is trying to um, simulate real cars, so um, that would be a little bit off what we do. But it's something that we've talked about a lot. Same with tracks, we could just make our own tracks. Sure. Uh, but it's. So far, we've stuck with simula trying to simulate as best we can the real world. We, we talked a little rally before. Let's talk other things that we've kind of just thrown out over time. But, I mean, any work on motorcycle riding at all? Racing? Yeah. 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 We talk about that. You know, that one's uh, – we talk about that a lot. In fact, uh, I emailed you a, a, probably a year ago, and we were talking about controllers for motorcycles. So, um, you know, so that's that's one issue. And, uh, uh you know, to do a motorcycle, according to Dave Cameron, wouldn't be that hard. Um, even the lean of the motorcycle wouldn't be that hard. Um, but I've heard him say that before. <laughs> but uh, it's it's something we'd like to do. I mean, we have the tracks. Right. right. We have the tracks the bikes run on. So it's just really developing the vehicle. Um, you mind talking about some other sims a little bit? Sure. 
Um, you know, when you're looking at your competition, a set of course R Factor Two project cars. I mean, do you look at them as competition, or do you just look at them as fellow developers? I mean, what's the environment um, like? I think both. I mean, I, I'm glad they're there um, because I think um, it's good to have competition. I think it's healthy, and so I do look at them. And uh, and secondly, I think it helps the overall market. I mean, I think the sim. I have to tell you, the sim racing market is, is um, I wish it was a lot bigger. And it's going to take more than one or two good products to make it big. I mean, um, and so, you know, I think people that are going to play those products are going to hear about iRacing and probably want to try iRacing and vice versa. So I think probably we've brought in a lot of sim races. Um, you know, we worked hard. I think we've, we've, you know, from the console market, from the racing world, I think we've, introduce a lot of people to sim racing and iRacing and I think those people will go try those products honestly and good for, and I hope it works the other way around um, so um, so I'm glad they're there and you know they they all have their strengths strengths and weaknesses just like we do um, and right now I we're, they we're not competition with the perspective of they're they're definitely something different than we are um, you know we talked about modding and, and things like that so they're they definitely have a different niche. Now, uh, definitely not your competition. Look at the console side of things, but this is a big year for the consoles. You've got uh, Gran Turismo coming out for the old machine, and then you've got Forza coming out for the new machine. What's your take on the console guys and what they're doing and what their sims are looking like? Uh, they're awesome. You know, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto just came. It's a little unrelated, but they, they, I was just saying... Uh, what they do, eight hundred million in the first twenty-four hours. That's that's insane. But uh, <laughs> I know it's not a racing game, but still, there's um, some driving. It's driving, and uh, yeah, it's like I say. I mean, it's it's for us. We love the fact that those titles are out there and doing so well because people are. I mean, Logitech is selling hundreds of thousands of wheels because of those games, and there's no better customer for us than you know target for us than trying to get somebody that owns a wheel to try sim racing um, so um, so we love that they're out there we like to play them we're fans of those games they're definitely something different um, it's a much bigger market and we hope to you know slowly um, we hope some of those fans slowly get more into uh, more um, you know serious sim racing over time so uh, it's a great target for us um, going after those going after those customers well, let's talk about going after them. Any plans to get on the Xbox or the PlayStation? I mean, with them making new consoles, does that make it easier for you guys to get towards the console side of things? Yeah, I think I think with the PS4 and the Xbox One, that definitely opened our eyes. Um, until then, it was it, it 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 didn't make a lot of sense for us um, for a lot of different reasons. But you know, with the PS4 and the Xbox One, I think we're certainly uh, a lot more interested than we would have been otherwise. Um, you basically basically can, if you wanted to, I'm not saying we would do this, you could be on your PC racing against somebody, in theory, on an Xbox, um, Xbox One or a PS4 someday. Um, I think if we ever did it, we'd probably keep it, keep a wall between them, except we might have a couple series where they would race against each other, but it's something, uh, it's something to consider, that's for sure. Um, it's something we haven't ruled out, um, but you know, don't freak out, I Racing Nation. You know, we're not uh, turning it into a, a game, but uh, it, it's uh, again, it's just it's something to think about from the perspective of can we create more sim racers? It's, it's almost you know a marketing thing for us. Can we? Um, there's so many people have never heard of sim racing. You know, this kind of sim racing and I Racing, and you know, all the other games we just talked about, our factor and everything else. So, if we can reach more people by being on those stores and stuff like that. It, it's, it's worth thinking about. Absolutely. Um, in the past, we've talked about an iRacing Lite. Uh, I'm not sure if that meant maybe a smaller version for the PC, or is iRacing Lite what would we'd see on the consoles if you went that route? Yeah, we've, 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 we talk about that a lot too. And uh, you know, again, it's, it's this notion of how do we get people to try iRacing and understand what sim racing is. Because you know, a lot of people come in and say, oh, geez, I don't have a wheel or pedal set. And, um, you know, can they, could they try iRacing? Um, just, uh, or they did have a wheel and pedal set, but they don't want to spend the $20 to see if it works for them. Um, it's, it's pretty overwhelming if you're not a sim racer, all this stuff. So, 
you know, we, we've talked about maybe doing a light free product, um, just a really scaled down version where um, people could try out their hardware or just see what sim racing is or just just get a feel for it, um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, so we, we have talked about that That's quite a bit. We've talked about that quite a bit. Yeah, well, I mean, it could really open things up. And like you said, it's about getting people to just try it. I mean, once they have a wheel, if they could just try iRacing, that might be enough. Right. And, um, you know, and if we ever did it, it would definitely be completely separate from iRacing. So it wouldn't be a, like a co- – you would they wouldn't be in the rookie series with the iRacing paid members. So sure, it would sure. be a it's kind of a standalone, um, standalone version, scaled-down version of iRacing. All right. Um, now, taking a step back from iRacing, just looking at sim racing as a whole, where do you see it going in the near future? Uh, where do I see sim racing going? You know, we've been growing by, by 20% a year, and uh, I hope sim racing is. Um, and so I, I, I see it continuing to do that um, with, you know, with, with um, it's great to see these, these, these console games doing so well. And, and um, I think we can mirror that market and actually grow faster than that um, the console market. So that's where I see it growing, where if the console market's growing at 10%, sim racing's growing at 20% a year um, and, and just organically continue to grow. And I think that's been, you know, that's been happening. That's been my experience being around this for six or seven years. Um, I don't know what, you, you know, and I, because I, I think the technology and the hardware and everything else and the, and the software, the sims are getting better and better and it's going to be a, a more compelling, compelling experience. So um, I think we're just going to need as an as a industry to keep doing that. So um, that's pretty much everything I have. Anything else? I mean, I, pick your brain. Anything else you, you, know, you can think of? No, what's, what's, what's new with you guys? What's going on at, uh, at Inside Sim Racing? Anything exciting? Well, we have a new website in the works. We are just excited about the future. Again, Forza and Gran Turismo coming out this year is huge, not just for us, the show. It's huge for sim racing. It's huge for iRacing. It's huge for, for everybody. Um, so we're just really excited. It's a good time of year for us and having a good time. Yeah, you didn't ask me uh, too many tough questions, so uh, I appreciate that about uh, things coming in the future. So, uh, but you asked me enough. Well, you, you know, you're always so you forthcoming. Much. So once you get going, you pretty much just start telling. You you actually ended up answering half of my questions just in being elaborate. Yeah. So I thank you. Thank you for being on here. Thank you for being so forthcoming. And uh, it was a great time talking to you. And, Sean yeah, and thank you to Sean. Uh, thank Sean Siff for setting all this up. And beyond that, thank everybody at iRacing for us because we miss you guys. It's been a while since we've hung out, and we have some good friends over there. Yeah, definitely. And I'll let you know about uh, I'll let you know about Texas and, yeah. uh, and getting the barbecue. So it's it's been great. Thanks for having me on. Let's not wait so long this next time around. And I uh, appreciate it, Sean. Thanks, Darren. Thanks uh, for setting this up as well. So that's going to do it for Opinion Nation. Sean Cole for Tony Gardner. We'll see you next time.